Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shura and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Supreme Court judgment on mobile verification guidelines. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mr. R.V. Sharda Prasad, Independent Telecom Consultant, Mr. Ram Narayan, DDG Security, Department of Telecommunications, and Mr. Rajanas Matthews, Director General, Cellular Operators Association of India. And now for the headlines. The Supreme Court rules that SIM cards will now be issued only after verification of documents. The Supreme Court Empowered Committee rules that penalty of 50,000 rupees will be imposed if service provider is caught selling pre-activated SIM cards. And now the service provider will have to pay a penalty for delay in communicating details of disconnection. Now mobile SIM cards will be issued only after the verification of original documents and televerification of consumer has been made. Also, individuals will not be able to obtain bulk connections. The Supreme Court Empowered Joint Committee has issued new mobile verification guidelines. The Supreme Court in its judgment on mobile verification observed that while hearing matters related to the attack on parliament, they had seen a large number of calls which had been made by terrorists from instruments containing unverified SIM cards. The court felt that mobile SIM cards being sold without verification had caused security threat and malpractice in the telecom sector. There are almost a billion subscribers that we have amongst all these service providers. So therefore there's a huge task from a security point of view, from an accounting perspective, from a revenue point of view, that all these subscribers are accounted for. So therefore, the dispute arose for such a large exercise, how and in what manner should the licensees carry out subscriber verification and what is satisfactory to the government. The Supreme Court had directed a joint committee of Department of Telecom and Telecom Regulatory Authority to frame guidelines for mobile subscriber verification. According to the guidelines issued by the committee, SIM cards will be activated only after all the documents are verified by the service provider. Televerification is mandatory before the activation of the SIM card is done. A unique number would be given to every mobile application form for reference purposes. Proof of address POA and proof of identity POI will be verified by the authorized person at the point of sale. Mobile connections issued to foreigners will only be valid till the validity of their visa. The guidelines clarify that connections issued to foreigners should not exceed beyond three months, even if the visa validity is beyond three months. You expect now private players to function as super cops. This is ridiculous. According to the guidelines, bulk connections will only be provided to organizations and companies. Physical verification is mandatory for bulk connections. A new SIM card will be issued in case of change of the name of the subscriber. Any change in address will have to be communicated within one week or else the service will be terminated. After the DOT guidelines, now the service providers will have to deal with the verification process. Not only this, FIRs will be filed against licensees and customers who submit forged documents. With camera person Pradyumna Malik, Subina Roy, Rajya Sabha TV. The petitioner had argued that 65% of all prepaid SIM cards in Kashmir alone are issued without verification. Now, my question to you straight away is, sir, the guidelines by the Empowered Joint, Joint Committee, or we can call it the Empowered Committee, the guidelines that they have issued, it seems to be a pretty tight well, I think um, the intention of the committee was a traceability, that once someone is suspected of having committed a crime, then you can uh, trace his whereabouts and trace his communications. Now, in, is it going to work in actual practice? I think not. Because terrorists will not go through this process. They will clone SIM cards and they will clone uh, the IMEI of handsets. Now, that is something that can be done fairly simply, cloning of SIM cards and cloning of handsets, or they will spoof a handset or they'll spoof Wi-Fi networks. They will not go through all this process of, you know, 
forging identification documents and all that. It, this ends up creating a huge bu bureaucracy. A whole lot of work I will need to be done, effort and work and time and money will be spent. But what is the end result? I mean, you're trying to make terrorists into law-abiding citizens <laughs> and fill out forms and, you know, this is something that terrorists don't do. Miss, because, uh, you know, they can, they can uh, crack into a Wi-Fi network and send their messages or uh, uh, use Skype or use a lot of VOIP networks where traceability becomes difficult. So, tell me something. I'm just trying to uh, try and understand the whole thing. Yes. The Supreme Court says that we don't have technical information, so we will set up a body, which is DOT and TRAI, two members each, and they will go into the details, they'll come out with certain guidelines. Now, the moment this joint committee is formed, suddenly it has a brief coming from Supreme Court. Yes. So they want to the, do the job to the best of their ability, which essentially means tightens up everything, everything, ignores implementation and the practical aspect of Absolutely. the entire business. So is it meant just for the Supreme Court or is it meant for the people of India? I think it's just meant to comply with the Supreme Court guidelines because if you look at all terrorist attacks that have been carried out in the last four years, uh, the one bomb blast in Assam, where a person was caught uh, based on a Reliance uh, uh, yes. uh, phone. Mm -hmm. And then it turned out that he was 130 kilometers away at that very second, because the actual terrorist had cloned the ESN number and the IMEA number of his phone. And this, this is what terrorists are good at. They, they've cloned the IMEA numbers of the phones and they've cloned the SIM cards. I get when, when they do both, it's going to be very difficult. I'll bring in, I'll, I'll bring in uh, they'll use, uh, Mr. Ram Narayan, yeah, who is Skype. DDG security, and yeah. I think he will have to give us a perspective. I mean, the basic question to you, sir, is why ensure that 50 crore of Indian citizens get down to writing papers and depositing forms in order to ensure that the 10 crore or even less than that, 5 crore, or even 1 crore terrorist doesn't filter through. Now, is that how the citizen should be treated? I mean, despite easing things, you are piling up more compliances on him. I think uh, if we see the issue in the right perspective, if we see the complete volume that 950 million phones are there, then it, it seems to be a very gigantic task. But in actual practice, it is not like that. Because whenever we avail a service, it is not about the only mobile connections. For any service when we avail, we fill up a form and we give some documents. Mm -hmm. So here also it is simply filling up a form and giving documents. So this is not that gigantic. Uh, no sir, sense. it is so a it, question it, is verification, uh, yes, post I, verification, I, activation. I, I will come to that. Three, three yes, days. Yes. The issue is just availing a service and the traceability is ensured, the, uh, is ensured to that extent. As to the issue sometime, it is felt that whether, uh, uh, whether it is a, a unnecessarily burden on the customers and the telecom service providers, what we feel is it is not because of the two reasons, I will tell you. The one is the 100% security can never be ensured by any kind of agency. Uh, agency. Yeah. yeah. Even means whether it is police force, whether it is uh, the borders. What we do is we try to enhance the security functions. Right. So it enhances the security functions. It does not guarantee that every terrorist or every person who misuses a phone can be caught, can or be traced. caught or uh. traced about it. Majority but, can be. But majority could can be. be. Yes. So even if we are able to stop a few of them, then That's this is an exercise yeah. worth. Yeah. Because the whole exercise doesn't cost much yeah. to that extent. Because one terrorist attack, if you are able to stop, it can cause a damage of thousands of crore rupees, and there is no cost to the lives lost. Hundreds of li lives, yes. As far as the lives is concerned. Mm. So even if that, that objective is achieved, then a, a big objective is achieved. Mm -hmm. To the extent whether it is to comply with the Supreme Court, Supreme Court is the Supreme Court of India, and it represents the sentiments of the people. It takes into account all those factors. So therefore, it is for serving the people. It is not for only the Supreme Court. And to that extent, it is not only, at the, only after the Supreme Court has given the sentence. Subscriber verification guidelines have been there since 1996 in rudimentary forms and since 2007 in quite, uh, in, in quite established forms. 
But what the Supreme Court judgment has made is it has made slightly more stringent yes. a few of the things which loopholes were there. Have so, those plugged. have been plugged in. It is not a new exercise which the Supreme Court has imposed on the people of the India. Okay. So, if we see the, these two things, then we, we can really understand what has been the sentiment of the Supreme Court and what has been the sentiment of the security agencies and how it enhances the security function of the government. Right. So, the point, the simple question that I want you to address is, what is the percentage of profits that will be minimized because of these compliances? Which means you have to now inform, you have, you have to create an infrastructure to televeri for televerification. You will have to notify within seven days the term that uh, a disconnection has happened. If not, 3,000 rupees per week. If your activation, three days minimum activation will be affected, which means I take a phone uh, till the time you say, verify, that okay, this is verified, and you are not a security agency, nor your uh, salesman is. So for verification, it's going to take some time. The, given these three aspects, do you see the entire business suffering a setback? Um, so Mr. Rai, let me contextualize it. I'll give you a response in terms of the cost and explain. First of all, uh, let there be no question uh, but that the service operators are absolutely committed to the security of this country. There ought to be no debate about that. Secondly, let me basically say that as opposed to other countries in the world, unfortunately or fortunately, mobility is the only game in town in terms of a communications network. In all of the other countries of the world, you have three and four other uh, alternatives. You have a landline, which is about 95% uh, penetrated. You have a cable network, which also provides telephony. We have a mobile network. And the government usually has its own private network. Enterprises have their own private Net networks. Uh, except for mobility, all of the others are very nascent to uh, infantile stages in India. And so, therefore, it becomes the instrument of choice for criminality as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that needs to be recognized. The third point that we are raising is that in the mobility field, we have been the greatest supporter of law enforcement and the solution of crimes. All right. right. The uh, police and the LEAs now recognize that because of the technology we bring to the table, the incidence of being able to track down culprits yeah. uh, is much greater and much more certain. Right. So that is there. Now, coming to this issue of the cost component, the point you are saying is that being absolutely committed to security, ought we to be burdened with a cost of security? Mm -hmm. The airlines don't get burdened with it. Railways don't get burdened with it. No other entity gets burdened with the cost of security. There are independent forces which are targeted to do that. Mm -hmm. Our only uh, sort of contribution is saying is that please take the burden and let it come back. We contribute 30% of our revenue in terms of all kinds of uh, levies to the government. Mm -hmm. Ought not the government to use a portion of those levies to put in place uh, independent mechanics. mechanics and bodies like uh, the border police or some other mm -hmm. to basically enforce these types of things. Getting to the cost component, today, as a result of the term cells reviewing CAF forms and all of this, we have been slapped with 500 crore rupees worth of penalties, right? The total additional cost of having to comply with the additional requirements that are coming up as a result of the CAF forms is e easily equal to at least 1% to 2% of our total revenue stream. All right? Those are not insignificant numbers. Uh, and so as we go forward, there's the added burden of saying is that when the term per people come in and say, oh, well, this is a misapplied CAF, there's that added burden that the industry faces. So headlines, absolutely committed to security. The cost of security, government should basically uh, take, take that. Take the burden of security verification. Exactly. Time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will talk about the penalty aspect of the guidelines. Welcome back. The new mobile subscriber verification guidelines impose heavy penalty on the service provider if he is found selling pre-activated SIM cards. The service provider will also have to face heavy penalties if it does not communicate details of mobile disconnection within a fixed time frame to telecom monitoring cell.
The tele density per 100 population, which is an important indicator of telecom penetration in the country, has increased from negligible levels to over 50% in recent times. But regulations have not kept pace with the growth in the sector. In a country where documentation, as you know, sometimes is a challenge, uh, to say that you'll be 100% accurate is sometimes a challenge, but we are pretty close. We 95% based on the term cell uh, checks. The new guideline seeks to make the service provider responsible. Mobile disconnection details will now have to be given to the telecom monitoring cell, TERM term, within seven days. In case of non-compliance, they may face a penalty of 3,000 rupees per connection per week. There will be a penalty of 50,000 rupees for selling pre-activated SIM cards, non-compliance of mobile verification and if the mobile connection in the foreigner's name exceeds the visa limit. The responsibility is still with the licensees. They are the ones who have to face penalty and the penalties have been increased progressively. So therefore, there are sometimes if you add up the penalties, they add up to hundreds of crores of rupees. These guidelines were based on the recommendations of the Joint Expert Committee constituted by the Supreme Court. The court had asked the committee to resolve issues like whether re-verification was to be done by service providers or the telecommunication department, if there was a need to increase the penalty for selling pre-activated SIM cards, what is the best mode of delivery of SIM cards to ensure proper verification, whether mobile subscribers' database is to be kept by the Department of Telecommunication for national interest and how much data is to be revealed to the security agency. Public spirited citizen Avishek Goenka had filed public interest litigation in the Supreme Court seeking directions to the government for bringing out strict guidelines for security reasons. Now the service providers along with the verification process will also have to maintain a list of actual subscribers and update the database on a regular basis. With camera person Pradeemna Malik, Subina Roy, Rajya Sabha TV. The court recorded the argument that around 80% of the prepaid SIM cards were purchased in pre-activated form, which is in violation of the rules. So this, um, Mr. Matthews, the issue of pre-activated, now it is activation after verification. What is going to be the impact on you? Um, clearly what that means is one, additional costs because uh, we are now required to have employees. Previously, it was an outsource function. Now, there has to be an employee that uh, actually has to receive the hard copy documents. Uh, we can't scan those documents and send it as we previously did. So that comes in physical form. So the delay of getting it from the point of sale to that point of processing could now be anywhere from five to seven days because you're now penetrating the rural areas more and more. The urban areas are pretty well uh, penetrated. So mm -hmm. there's that time delay. And then uh, once the person gets it, there are a couple of things he or she has to do. One. Uh, you have to verify again all of the physical documents to make sure that prima facie there is no uh, violation in terms of the document provided in terms of point uh, of uh, identification and address. So then after that is done, you have to ensure that all of the CAF line items are complete and then you have to enter it into the database. And then activate. No. There's an additional step. You have to be able to televerify all right, okay. so the SIM card, when it is sold, can be programmed only to make one, the first outgoing call has to be to our call center. All right, so okay. we can't even call the customer anymore to do the televerification. All right, so we wait now. So but no pre-activated SIM, we wait for the customer to make that first call. As soon as the first call comes in, the person verifies, is your name Mr. Singh, is your address so and so, uh, blah, blah, blah. I've got blah. it, I've got it. You've and made then, it very easy for all of us to understand. And then, yes, sir. And then I activate and then the person becomes live. How many days? As he, you, he's clearly set out the procedure. Do you agree with that is how it has to happen or there is a change uh, that you see and it's going to be much more practical? Mm. So the pro whatever the process Mr. Rajan Matthew has described is exactly the process. But as far as the delay is concerned, so I, I, I'll give two points to Mr. Matthew. One is first I want to lighten his burden because uh, uh, he says the cost should be borne. 
by the government. I bear his cost. So you make the 100 percent verification, all your penalties will go away. So your burden is lightened. <laughs> okay, this is a straight offer. <laughs> yes, straight offer. <laughs> so, so, so why I'm saying if the term cells across the country had a consistent way of interpreting it today, I am held responsible for determining whether a document is counterfeit, accurate, or true. Right? I get it. At the second point, Mister. Uh, the second point is whatever the process is described. What happens sometime in the business process is whenever you get a challenge, you make your processes more efficient. Mm -hmm. And when you make the processes efficient, organization become more efficient, not in one area, in all areas, mm -hmm. because it, it uh, has a bearing on all the areas. Yeah. So once this process has been prescribed, so there'll be the an efficiency is, achieved over yeah, a time. So uh, efficiency will be achieved. They will be forced to create uh, a more efficient mechanism by which they can activate the same cards quickly. I get it. And because it is applicable uniformly, all the telecom service providers, not to one or two, so there is no disadvantage or advantage to one over the other. other. Yeah. Mr. Prasad, the point I wanted you to address is, first of all, you've seen, understood how the verification yeah. is going to happen, what, the impact on consumer, first, and second, the kind of penalty slapping that you expect the service providers to face in the coming time. Penalty because all of them have been enhanced, yes. one, and second is the impact on consumer. Quickly, sir. Well, impact on consumers is going to be uh, uh, great. In fact, it's going to be greatest on uh, foreigners visiting India, yeah. especially foreign businessmen, because they'll come, they'll apply for a card, and then they'll have to twiddle their thumbs for you know four or five days until their uh, SIM gets activated. Mm -hmm. So how, how are they going to conduct business in India for those few days till their SIM gets con uh, uh, activated. Mm -hmm. Also, foreign tourists are going to be put to a lot of inconvenience. Mm -hmm. So, def definitely, I mean, you're slowing down the velocity of business in India at a time when there is a fiscal deficit. You want business to get done, but business will not get done. And uh, certainly, now on the uh, penalties being enhanced, uh, basically, I think that's another way of uh, the government trying to push its, uh, let's say, if they get caught on a uh, you know, of not being able to trace a criminal, now they'll push it back uh, and make the the costs of that at least go to the service provider. No, basically, all this is not going to prevent terrorism because any terrorist will get around these uh, uh, issues. These yeah, yeah, I get it. By using Skype or voice over IP or anything like that. These will help, you know, may at best help uh, prevent petty crimes done on the spur of the moment without pre planning like. You know, some kind of cyber stalking harassment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then when the person knows that his phone can be traced so, or his identity can be traced, so the petty kinds of crimes uh, uh, will be taken care yeah, of. But uh, the big crimes, care. this is not the way it happens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Time for us to enter into a break. When we return, we will show you an interview with Mr. Abhishek Goenka, petitioner in the case. Welcome back. My colleague Subina Roy spoke to petitioner in the case Avishay Goenka and tried to get his perspective on the issue. So what had prompted you to file this petition? Whatever activity happens, whether it's an illegal or a legal activity, the communication is done. So it, it becomes very essential to, to track the origin. And because of uh, this, uh, you know, like uh, attitude of telecom operators, this thing was not being taken care of. There are a huge number of SIMs which were being uh, tracked in the market, which were pre-activated without documents, fake documents. So one, no one was ready to take the ownership of that. Home Ministry was regularly, you know, putting uh, in the media that we want some kind of regulation to happen. So what did the court say? Like, See, the court uh, said, like, what they uh, did not address was that they cannot get into policy making because they don't have the technical expertise for that. And what they addressed was the fundamental rights which are supreme. So no policy by the government can be violative of fundamental rights. And this policy was clearly violating those rights. So Supreme Court formulated guidelines which were the origin of those guidelines were the proposals, the prayers of my petition. So they listed those guidelines and asked to try and dot to sit together because try had separate views 
and dot had separate views again. So they asked them to sit together, formulate a policy and see that these fundamental rights are addressed and the policy was there. The petitioner had argued that prepaid SIM cards are most commonly issued without verification and constitute 96% of the total SIM cards sold in the country. The, quest, the point you were packing up, sir, on the issue, on the new ideas that yes. need to be included in the whole package. See, basically there are at, at the most 10,000 terrorists in the country in a population of uh, 1,000 million. <laughs> now, so what you can do is do some statistical sampling uh, of all these uh, forms, maybe do 1% or 2% of the forms, wherever the suspicious activities, then go and investigate it, get further that what are the forms submitted, what are the identifications submitted, but do a lot of statistical quality control, statistical checking, random statistical checking. Uh, uh, all these kinds of ideas are already there uh, in, in uh, industry. So that can just be applied to this process that what are, what are the cost and benefit that you get out of checking everything 100% when 99.99% are going to be compliant anyway. So right. it's the exceptions you've got to look at, you know, do an exception checking. And identify the percentage which is varying well, from yeah, the, which is varying uh, from the compliances. Yeah, from the compliances. Right. So, and, uh, <laughs> and go after those people. Go. On the point of uh, uh, the security aspect, you were saying, yeah, uh, one is this uh, compliances are done uh, statistically only. Mm -hmm. uh, the sample are checked by at the rate of 0.01%, uh, uh, that is one form out of 1000 only. Mm -hmm. So the initially is the com uh, initially is only taking the document by the telecom service provider and then actual com compliance checking is only on the sample basis. Mm -hmm. That is done by the government and the cost is also borne by the government. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the the New idea is that we should implement these guidelines faithfully, and if we do that, then uh, really the result will be achieved. So I would request uh, at this stage that we should put all our energies, because now the issue is settled. So now how should we implement it? And uh, we should uh, really implement it in its true respect. In a mutually beneficial yes, manner. Many. The point you were making on the cost. Uh, Mr. Rai, I think the fundamental problem in our country is one of identity. Mm -hmm. All right, we have to start making Aadhaar and some other you know, identity uh, cards absolutely robust and ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. And without that, we are continuing to be burdened <laughs> with bearing that cost, which is really a responsibility of government. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. sir, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can wa also watch our shows on the YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.